Praise God in this place this evening. Amen. Praise God. God is good. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 Thank God for the opportunity that we have been given to just come and, and just give just a little bit of word to you this evening. Um, as, as we've been talking about, we are from Rejoice Temple of Praise Church. That's on Moore's Lane. Um, and that is a Stanford address. But we are, we're just a small non-denominational church, but we just believe in loving on everybody, Amen. and we believe in, you know, just preaching the Word of God. Amen. Uh, a lot of places you go, you hear all kinds of doctrine, all kinds of things that really have nothing to do with serving God, but right. we want to be a church that is obedient to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Um, so I'm going to go before the throne of grace in prayer. Father in heaven, Lord God, I thank you for once again allowing me to just stand for you. Father, I ask that you just move me out of the way, God, and just fill me up to overflowing with your spirit. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord God, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So I... Uh, I was asking the Lord, what is it you would have me have me to speak about this evening? And so he took me to Mark chapter 8. And um, I'm not going to exactly read it to you, but I am going to, you know, just talk a little bit about it. Uh, in the 8th chapter of Mark, it's talking about uh, the 4,000, the multitude that Jesus fed. Uh, our Jesus is a divine multiplier. Yes. You know, whatever yes. we stand in need of, we may ask for a little bit, but God has so much more for us. Yes. But, you know, he is a miracle worker. But the thing about Jesus is the compassion that he had for those that, that needed, those that were thirsty, those that were hungry, those that yes. were sick. Anything they had a need for, God was able to provide that for them. So uh, in this story about, uh, about the 4,000 that um, had been with him for three days, and you know, the way it is today, you can hardly get people to sit in church, even under anointed preaching, for an hour. Right. You know, it, it's hard right. to get people, right. you know, to the way that they used to be. I mean, I hear so many stories about the, you know, the old ways, and there's nothing wrong with the old ways, you right. know. But, you know, people are so different these days, and they don't want to spend the time listening about God and, and the things of God. But yeah. here these people have sat, and I'm sure they sat outside in the weather and everything. They didn't have a covering or anything like that. They were sitting out there, and they stayed three days listening to our Jesus teach right. them, uh, um, you know, loving on them. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so uh, it says that some of them had even come from afar. So some of the folks may have been able to go home at night, but there were some that had come from afar. So, uh, you know, you have to imagine that they may have laid out there under the stars each night, Amen. but they were there ready when Jesus came back to preach that word to them and to teach them more about how to live a life that's pleasing to him. Amen. Amen. So... Um, <clears throat> So before the end of the meeting, you know, after these three days, Christ in his compassionate way decided that we are going to feed these people. Now, you know, over in the sixth chapter, he fed 5,000. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that is just how loving our Jesus is. But he's not going to let these 4,000 leave out of this place without feeding them. So he asked his disciples once again, what is it that we have? And so they said that they had seven loaves and a few small fish. And so God, you know, in, in, his, in his love and, and in his mercy and his grace, he has multiplied this thing to feed all of these people. And it says, and they were full. And when they were done, there were seven big baskets left Amen. of fragments of food. Amen. Jesus' provision is always more than enough. Right. There's, no, there's, there's a song we sing that you can't be God's giving. Right. You know, because the more you give to him, the more he gives back to us. Right. It's so true. I see that in, in my life. You know, God has always been one to give and give and give. I can give a little bit, but he gives a whole lot. Amen. So it goes on to verse 11, and it begins to talk about the Pharisees. Um, let me go ahead and read that in 11 about the Pharisees. 
Uh, it says, Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. He charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. Now, they had forgotten the bread, so they're thinking that he's jumping on them about not bringing something to eat. And, and I, I read that, and as I read that, you know, I've read it before, and it's like, you have seen your Jesus provide for 5,000 with a little bit. You had just come from a meeting with our Jesus, and he has provided meat and bread for the 4,000. And you are worried because you forgot to bring more than one loaf of bread. Who are you riding with in this ship? Right. Have you forgotten? Right. And that's just right. like we are. We worry about the things that go on day by day. We worry about our bills. We worry about our children. We worry about our health. And Jesus is in control. He's right there. Right. And all we have to do is acknowledge him and say, yes, Lord, I know you're right there. I know that you have got me. You are in control of everything. Yes. And so, Lord, I know that you will come and see about me. You will meet my need. But here they are, worried about only bringing a loaf of bread. Right. But that is not what our Jesus was talking about. He was talking about the things that come up, the, the, the doctrine and the traditions and, and the man-made rules and all of those things that the Pharisees were about. Uh, you know, they, that's what, you know, that, that's what he was trying to, to show them, that you can't follow after the Pharisees because the Pharisees will lead you astray because these are religious folks who think that they have everything. They think that they are godly and they're holy and they're righteous. But as we read the word of God, we find that Jesus was not impressed with them. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. Jesus had trouble with them. Jesus had problems with them. And so, you know, as, as he's talking with them, uh, it, it says that he, he went and, and met up with the Pharisees at one point. And, and they began to ask him questions. And, and they began to de uh, desire a sign. They demanded, basically, that Jesus show them a heavenly sign. And so he was having no part of that. And so he says, you know, I'm, I'm on my way. He gets in the ship and he goes to the other side. But that's when he's telling them, you know, telling his people, telling his disciples, you cannot... You cannot follow after the Pharisees. So, um, so it goes on, and, and you know, he just tells them, you know, watch out, watch out, beware. And that warning is for us today too. It's not just for them back then. Uh, leaven in this scripture is is hypocrisy. Uh, the Pharisees in Jesus' time they were powerful uh, Jewish sect. They were uh, they were well known. They were well respected, and they claimed to be more zealous and more righteous than the rest of the Jewish nation or society. And they considered themselves to be all that, but Jesus did not. All right. Anyone whose traditions nullify the law of God cannot be righteous in the sight of God. Of God. The spirit of the Pharisees is still alive today. All right, that's all right. Go ahead. Christians who are intolerant of the differences in others, they carry that spirit, all the right. spirit of the Pharisees. Jesus ministered to all kinds of people. It didn't matter who they were. He was right there for them. And we as disciples of Christ, we as the children of God, we as the saved folk, we that are righteous because of him, we are to do the very same thing. We are to minister to people regardless of what they look like, what they smell like, where they live, what they do for a living. We are to minister to those people. And I see so often that Christian folks don't want to deal with that. Right. They want somebody else to take, let the pastor take care of them. All right. But it's for all of the children of God. All, all of right. us that have, have been, you know, a, adopted into the family. It's right. our responsibility to minister to those that are lost, those that are, are in need, those that are sick, those are, that are depressed and on drugs and yes. doing the alcohol, all of that. That's our responsibility. He healed everybody. It says he healed them all. He didn't care what disease they had. They had leprosy. He didn't care. He touched them and he healed them. Amen. We should not be afraid to minister to anybody that comes and needs something from our Jesus. That's right. We are the light on this earth. 
Yes. That represents our Jesus. Amen. It's our responsibility. Amen. Church people can be so judgmental Amen. and so condescending to people that, that are different. People that have a different way of worshiping, a, a, a different way of praising God. Sometimes the church folks are, are, are enemies to those that are trying to do something for the Lord. Because it doesn't line up with what, what we think it might look like or what we think it should look like. We know we're in trouble when our personal opinions and convictions block the power of the gospel. Right. All right, all right. The gospel, the good news that we are supposed to share. Amen. Jesus is warning us that the traditions and the man-made doctrines, they have got to go. They will cause a stumbling block for somebody that is seeking God. All right. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 19, and 23 through 23 it says even though I am a free man with no master I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ when I was with the Jews I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ when I was with those who followed the Jewish law I, I too lived under that law even though I am not subject to the law I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law when I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. When I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness. For I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. Yeah. And that is what we should be doing as the children of Christ. Yes. Right. Never did Paul compromise his ministry by doing evil to reach others. That's not what that scripture means. That's not what I'm standing up here preaching about. He didn't adopt uh, the lifestyle of the sinners. That's not what we're to do. There are Christians that can quote scripture from any book in the Bible. They can pray beautiful prayers, but none of it matters if they're prideful and arrogant because they have missed the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The good news is that Jesus came to provide forgiveness for our sins right. because all are guilty of sin and Amen. condemned by God. The wages of sin is death. That's what we teach. The wages of sin is death. But because of God's love for the world, not just for the church, love for the world, That's right. His creation, he made a way for our sins to be forgiven. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to take our sin upon himself, upon himself. When Jesus hung on the cross and died, it was for all who would believe and come to Christ. Believe in his name. Jesus' resurrection guarantees the justification of all who believe. We are redeemed and we are bought with a price. That's what the Christians should be sharing. Amen. That's what the church should be sharing. That's what should be overflowing. The Holy Spirit is our guide. Right. The Holy Spirit is the one who tells us what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. Right. And he is the one who can get rid of that Pharisee spirit that some people carry these days. Right. We are supposed to be about our Father's business. Amen. And our Father's business is saving souls. Right. Showing the love of Jesus Christ everywhere that we go. Amen. That's what we believe at Rejoice Temple of Praise Church. Amen. My daughter has ministry where she goes out and ministers to those that are addicted on drug, you know, with drugs, alcohol, whatever it is. My sister here, she talks a lot to those that are depressed, those that have uh, families that have uh, someone who has OD'd in their family because she's been through these things. But, you know, without our testimony, without our honesty, people look at church folks differently. Right. But we want to be transparent. Right. Amen. You know, we want people Amen. to know that I know what you're going through. Amen. I've been there. Amen. I've been through things in my life that I will share with people in order for them to see how God brought me out. Yes. How he has blessed me in spite of the messes I've made in my life. Right. He was right there when I when I said, hey, I am done with this life out here. I am ready, Jesus, to come on the inside. Right. Take yes. me in. Yes. Cover me. And he was right there to do just that. Amen. Amen. That is the Jesus that we serve. That's right. That is the one who is the light. 
that we pray always shines through each one of us. Amen. As we go out and we do the work of the Lord. It's not always behind the four walls any longer. All right. They're out there and a lot of them will not come in. Mm -hmm. But right. it's up to us to go out to the hedges and the highways. That's right. Right. So I say to anyone that's listening, if you have not given your life to Christ, while you have breath in your body, it's not too late. Right. That's right. It doesn't matter what you've done. Our God is a forgiving God. That's right. His That's right. grace and His mercy is more than you could ever imagine. Amen. Receive what He has for you. Go to Him and just tell Him, God, I have messed up, but here I am. I believe and trust in you yes. that you will take care of my sin situation. Yes. I believe and trust in you, God, that, that you are the Son of that, that Jesus, you are the Son of God, that, that you just do sit on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Yes. That that you died for my sins. Yes. Just tell him that. Tell him that. And he'll be right there for you. Amen. With his arms open wide to receive you. Amen. And to bring you into the household of faith. Yes. Our God is an awesome God. Yes, he is. And his grace is amazing. Yes. I praise God, and I thank you for this opportunity to just have some time to just talk a little bit about the, the God that I know and the God that I serve. Amen. 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 Amen.